Hello everybody, welcome. Today I want to talk a little bit about the hardware acceleration on macOS on the classic Mac Pro. I have here my classic Mac Pro. It has two... Okay, now it reports the frequency difference we have to install in Core Boot. So today I have installed Core Boot to get the benefit of hardware acceleration on my Radeon RX 580. I have 64 gigs of RAM, so that's going to be running on triple channel. And if we go to system report, go to graphics and displays, you see that they have the RX 580 with 8 gigs on the first slot. It's a flashed card, meaning that I get the boot screen even without core boot. And interestingly enough, even though if I go here to PCI, you see that my card, oh, interesting, after installing core boot, I lost the Orinoco frame buffer and I'm at the Radeon frame buffer, but it's better now because I got hardware acceleration working here. As you can see here, unlike my previous videos, my CPU is running really low and the computer is quieter, it's excellent now. I want to compare the benefits of having this setup with the previous software solution. And I have here a very simple video for that. So this is a video of my friend teaching a class. And it's just a video done using a digital camera. But if you look here, you can see that the quality is quite good, the video is crisp and it's running at 60 fps at 15 megabits per second. And if we stop that, well, you'll see that the CPU usage remains unchanged. I've already prepared a short timeline here on Final Cut, and it's basically going to be only one hour of this video. I mean 10 minutes and if we open video proc go to settings you will see here that I have the hardware acceleration option available and enabled so 4k high profile both for H.264 and H.265 If you go to the activity monitor, we will see that my CPU usage for quick time is quite low and that the encoding of this video is being done by the GPU. We can hide this for now. Now let's see what happens when we go to Final Cut. Actually, I've already exported this to ProRes and let's see what happens when we get this into compressor. We go to add file, go to the desktop, take this video here, 18 gigs. I just decided to export ProRes to really not lose quality compared to the original H.264 from the camera. And let's first do Apple devices. 4K, so this is going to be H.264. The other page is going to be the same. And if you go to start batch, now before I actually start, I will stop the capture. I'll just take a screenshot at the beginning from Activity Monitor because I don't want the time to be disturbed by the encoding being done now by the 3D card. After doing H.264, I decided to try to do H.265, but I found out that it does not use the GPU. So I just found something very interesting. When I export from compressor, it does H.265 HEVC on the CPU, but if I go to Final Cut, go to Share, and here I'm using the same profile that I'm using 
on compressor. If I start exporting from here, this will use the, the GPU. So I'm going to set up some timer. And as soon as I click start, I'll show you the activity monitor and then cuts the clock. As you can see here, it is using the, the GPU. All right, so I'm gonna now install, install the Radeon RX 560 and let's see the performance difference. So this is the card I used before I upgraded to the flashed RX 580. And it's good because it takes power from the PCI bus, so I can have both cards in at the same time. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to remove both the Thunderbolt card here and the RAID card here. And I think I cannot remove the RAID card without removing the PCI area fan back here. Both cards have their fan spinning, so I can close the chassis. All right, I'm back to the GPUs as you can see here. And I don't know what the deal is, but once after I installed the two uh, CPUs, both the power supply and the PCI fans are going crazy. I could open HW monitor to see what's going on. Uh, why not? I don't know why it isn't opening, but for sake of my sanity, I'm going to override this because there's no reason why this would be so hot. This was just crazy. Okay, let's just do a few changes here. I like to keep my North Bridge bridge diode under 70. So let's come here to between 65 and 73. And here I like to set it to 850. All right. Now let's get back to business. Back to about this Mac. It shows only the Radeon RX 580. But if I go to this place, Interesting. I don't know what's going on here. Let's have a look on graphics in this place. Yes. So the 560 has 4 gigs, it's running on slot 4. Actually, it's the slot number 3 because the last one is occupied by Fen. 4x. And the 580 is on slot 1. 8 gigs, 16x. I'm gonna go first to compressor. We have a successful job here encoding the original video to H264. Took 2 minutes and 37 using the GPU to uh, encode the 10 minute video, which is very good. Now let's see if with the two GPUs we get a better performance. Activity monitor is here. 
I can see both GPUs. And let's go. We're the file. We're going to take the ProRes file here. Apple device is 4K, so that's going to do H.264. And we can start. Words file name. Okay, we can overwrite the file, but it doesn't matter. So let's do this and see what happens and how long it's going to take. Well, let's go to the find and remove the destination file. So we go to desktop. Uh, this is what we don't want, so goodbye. I can delete all the files I've created. Back to compressor, add file, press 4 to 2. We can start. And yes, we are using both GPUs. Now it seems that the bottlenecks elsewhere because they are not saturated. I'm going to stop the capture now to not distort the results too much. All right, everyone, this is crazy. So as you can see here, both CPUs started immediately going all the way to the top after I stopped um, capturing video. And that matches what I've seen in Apple's documentation stating that if you're running multiple hardware encodes at the same time, your performance reduces. So if you're doing multiple encodes, maybe it's better to use software render. And actually this is here in the compressor documentation. So if you go to preferences and if you go to the help here, it instructs you not to uh, enable multiple instances um, Yeah, uh, where was it? Yeah, so yes, here. If the computer has a hardware encoder and if you enable multiple instances of compressor, the time it takes to process a batch can increase because the hardware encoder can be only used a single pass, no segmented jobs. So probably. Uh, the QuickTime encoder running on hardware was fighting with compressor. Uh, so, yeah, so it seems some configurations require a single instance. So that's probably the case here. Uh, we're going to compare the performance, of course, after I switch to hardware render. So, for now, let's compare the time. So, this one failed, so it doesn't count. So let's see the successful ones. So 237, which one was which? Because I cannot see when the job was submitted because this is a very crappy interface. Okay, edit. 2149, 2153, 2238. Took zero seconds, so that doesn't count. So this is the first, 2149, 2239 was now. So as you can see here, actually the lapse of time increased. Probably the case here would be that you have uh, your only final cut and you're also using compressor and then you have extra performance because you can still operate Final Cut using the GPU and the and compressor is also using a GPU. Yeah, I don't know where this is coming from or if it's considering the GPUs, but as you can see, 
probably multiple GPUs would help Final Cut more than exporting and compressor because our performance decreased. And I don't think it's because of the few seconds I had uh, uh, quick time running in the beginning. Good, so let's try quitting compressor, going back to Final Cut, and try again our H.265 export. So let's go to File, Share, and this is going to be H.265, the setting taken for compressor, but as I mentioned before, if you take it from, if you export it from Final Cut, it does a hardware encode, and if you go to compressor, it does via software. So let's try to export this, you can call it whatever, and I'm going to start counting the time. As you can see, we have using the GPUs. And I will now quit QuickTime. All right, so here, I'm not going to even let this test finish. The reason being, so initially I was running this export and it seemed to have preferred the Radeon RX 560, or I don't know, perhaps it just doesn't have enough work to saturate both cards. Uh, so what happened here, I cancelled and actually connected the monitor to the RX 560 to see if the RX 580 would be free for rendering. But when I started the job again, as you can see, I was using even less of the 580 than I using than I was using before. And now that I started um, screen capturing, you can see that now I'm using the 580 more, which is great because well I can use QuickTime and record without you know being using you know 500% of CPU. I've been recording videos, eating a lot of GPU of CPU, and now I can move all this workflows to the GPU and not use so much electricity when I'm recording, have, have a quieter environment and actually be able to try some other things. So for example, FFmpeg on hardware or I don't know, more CPU intensive workflows, capture them without having a performance penalty for having switched to the GPU. So they can already see here that this is going to take longer. It's been running for three minutes and it's going to take longer than the previous one. So I'm not sure of what the limitation is or what is the criteria used by the system to send work to one GPU or the other. I'm not confident that is the way to go. Probably, as I said, if you have, if you're working on Final Cut and also using compressor, maybe having multiple GPUs helps. Maybe if you are composing uh, many uh, effects in parallel on a, unrendered sequence, maybe it helps. I'm not a specialist, but it was a fun experiment to run and I'm happy that I did it. So after this one is done, I will go back to my previous setup and I'm not going to really disable core boots now, but I will put my boards back and I'll leave a software render for both H.264 and H.265 running overnight because it's going to be brutal to just watch the computer with the fans blowing like crazy pushing data out i'm also going to compare when i exported my friend's video it took like six hours or five hours to export a one hour video so i'm going to compare the performance using the harder render now <laughs> 